Welcome to Poland Daily Culture. On today's episode, we're here in central Poland in the little city of Wawicz. Behind me is the Wawicz Ethnographic Museum. We're going to be showing you around the museum and all the sites inside. So you're going to find a lot more about Polish traditional culture. So join us on another fascinating journey around Polish culture. One of the monuments of Wawicz sculpture, from architectural monument and historical mementos to folk art, is the museum in Wawicz. It is located in the former seminary, designed by Tillman from Gemeran, and erected at the end of the 17th century by the primate Michał Radziejowski. The museum sets out to inspire the visitors and sensitize them to the past and current traditions of the region by the means of exhibitions, cultural events and educational activities. The history of the museum collection in Łowicz dates back to the turn of the 19th century and 20th century and is strongly connected with Władysław Tarczyński, a collector and a social worker. He made his collection available to the public in 1905 and called it the Antiquities Collection. The museum developed rapidly. It owned over 3,200 exhibits and a library until the outbreak of the First World War. For this, Wawtarczyński also included objects and tools from the field of ethnography in the historical artistic collection. The Ethnographic Museum of Polish Tourist Society opened in 1910 and based on the collection of an outstanding social worker, Aniela Chmielinska. The collection of the Municipal Museum and the Ethnographic Museum was originally located together in a building purchased for the museum purposes at 16 Staderynek Street, which was opened to the public until 1939. The period of the Second World War caused subsequent losses in the museum collections. The National Museum in Warsaw took over both collections in 1948 and formed its department. Connected collections were given a new residence in a reconstructed religious building dated from 1689, owned by the Cardinal Michał Radziejowski Foundation. The branch of the Baroque Art in Poland is situated in a former primate chapel dedicated to St. Karol Boromeusz. It is an original flank of the 17th century building, which wasn't destroyed during wartime. The interior vault is designed by Tillman from Jamaran and is decorated with illusionistic frescoes by Michelangelo Paloni, showing the life of Charles Borromeo, a patron, missionary and bishop of Milan. It's the best example of the Italian painter's artistic work in Poland from the turn of the 17th and 18th centuries. The paintings perfectly harmonizes with the stucco decoration on the vault and walls. There are also examples of artistic craft inside, such as furniture, fabrics, glassware, goldsmith, work, porcelain, painting and sculpture. Welcome to Poland Daily Culture. I'm John Carter and on today's show I'm joined by Mariana Monka. And we're here in uh, Wawicz Town Centre and we're standing outside uh, Skansen. Now, Mariana, first question got to be, what exactly is a Skansen? Dzień dobry. Skansen to muzeum na wolnym powietrzu. Hello. This antique building museum is an open air museum that presents wooden houses to show visitors how people used to live in a village. Our museum presents the area of the Łowicz Duchy and its inhabitants. A jego mieszkańcy to księżacy łowiccy. Huh. So, could you tell us uh, when was this particular uh, building uh, constructed? In fact, many of the buildings in the Duchy of Łowicz were built in the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. This particular building was built at the end of the 19th century. And why was it built? What, what's, what's the actual purpose of these traditional buildings? It is just a normal house for the farmers who lived here. Of course, the building was not located here in the Łowicz city center, but it was located in the village of the Duchy of Łowicz. It was relocated here. 
why are they still in existence today? You know, we see all around us sort of the modern world, as you said, you've got the roads going past. So why has this been preserved? That is because the former inhabitants of the Wovich Duchy cultivate their traditions and take care of it. That's why such wooden historic buildings are collected and placed in the open-air ethnographic museum not only here, but also in the Mojica village located seven kilometers from Wovich. There is a full-scale open-air museum. Uh -huh. And so who looks after this, these, these buildings today? All the objects that we see belong to the museum in Łowicz, the main unit. The employees take care of the open-air museum in Łowicz and in Małżyce. And could we find anything similar to this uh, elsewhere around Poland? Maybe in other uh, cities other than Łowicz? There are many open-air museums in Poland, but this open-air museum is unusual because it is located in the city center. There is also such an open-air museum in the Toron city center, but it's much bigger. Here we have only two farmhouses, so this is very small. Usually the museum is located in the village because the museum is supposed to show life in the village, where we have the quiet, where we hear the birds, where we see a lot of greenery. The vast majority of open-air museums is located outside the city. What type of people would have lived in such a house? Would it have been people who uh, had a degree of wealth and ha had money? or Because when I looked inside, for something that was built, you know, uh, over a hundred years ago, it looked very nicely all together, very tidy and kind of not what I would call mod cons, but, you know, for the time, it all looked very nice inside. So what type of people lived here? Is it kind of farmers or...? Tak, oczywiście byli to. Dzisiaj byśmy powiedzieli rolnicy, dawniej mówiło się gospodarze. Indeed, the farmers used to live in wooden houses. As you walked in, you can see two rooms. W środku widziałeś też, że były dwie izby. I to była bardzo istotna kwestia. It's a very important matter because one room was used during Christmas. It was beautifully decorated. Kna, służąca właśnie do spędzania. People used to spend holidays, Sundays, weddings in this room. The second room was a work room. They use it every day. W środku, w której właśnie odbywała się praca. The opener center of folk building craft is situated in the garden adjacent to the museum and was established in the mid-60s of the 20th century. There are two peasant homesteads presented. Residential buildings have been equipped with furniture and decorations corresponding to the periods in which they were built and used.